Madam Chair, dear colleagues, good morning. According to the tradition and this year's arrangement of the APPF, I should be the first to speak at this plenary session. Therefore, now, on behalf of the Chinese delegation, I hereby give you a briefing on the 22nd APEC Economic Leaders Meeting in Beijing. The 22nd APEC Economic Leaders Meeting was convened in Beijing on November the 10th and 11th, 2014. 30 Asia Pacific economic leaders, over 100 ministers, 6,000 delegates, and 1,500 business people attended the meeting and relevant events. With the concerted efforts of all parties, the meeting yielded over 100 initiatives with fruitful results. It ushered in a new historical chapter and left an important mark on the process of Asia-Pacific cooperation. During the meeting, leaders of economic members carried out discussion under the theme of shaping the future through Asia-Pacific partnership and carried out discussions on regional economic integration, economic innovation, growth reform, and development, infrastructure development, and connectivity. They talked about economic cooperation and reached broad consensus. The major outcomes are as follows. First, we made it clear of the general direction and goals of Asia-Pacific cooperation and development. The summit passed the Beijing Agenda for an Integrated innovative and interconnected Asia-Pacific, and the statement on the 25th anniversary of APEC, shaping the future through Asia-Pacific partnership. These are the two most important outcome documents, which proposed that we need to build an Asia-Pacific partnership featuring mutual trust, inclusiveness, and win-win cooperation, build an open Asia-Pacific economic landscape with innovative growth and integrated developments and interests and depicted a new blueprint for the long-term development and prosperity for Asia Pacific, injecting new impetus. Second, we made the important decision of the initiation of the F FTA of Asia Pacific. We ratified the roadmap for APEC's contribution to the realization of the FTAAP and decided to carry out joint strategic study on FTAAP so as to turn the FTA to a reality. The roadmap uh, symbolizes a substantive step towards the FTAAP. It is the official initiation of the FTAAP. It is an important decision which will elevate Asia-Pacific integration to a higher level. It will also benefit economies across the Asia-Pacific, uh, across the Pacific Ocean and injecting new impetus to the growth and development of Asia-Pacific and APEC members. Third, it depicted a new blueprint for Asia-Pacific connectivity. It passed the APEC blueprint on connectivity and decided to achieve the goal of the connectivity of hardware, software, and personnel by the year 2025 and to build an Asia-Pacific uh, Asia connectivity landscape that is comprehensive and multi-tiered. It will enable Asia-Pacific to lead global connectivity and win more opportunities in global competitiveness. Fourth is to find the five pillars supporting Asia economic growth. It passed 
the APEC Accord on Innovative Developments, Economic Reform and Growth, and decided to use economic reform, new economy, innovative growth, inclusiveness, inclusiveness support, and organization to strengthen macroeconomic coordination and realize the sound cycle of innovation, reform, and growth so as to further consolidate Asia-Pacific's role as a global economic engine. The participants also carried out discussion on development paths and models that suits each other's conditions so as to achieve multiple developments and uh, common progress. Fifth, we opened new areas for the solution of uh, global challenges. Leaders carried out discussion on counterterrorism, climate change, epidemics, natural disasters, and corruption, and reached important and broad consensus. We decided to tackle these global challenges through cooperation. All parties committed to cooperate to help African countries in tackling and controlling the Ebola epidemic. The meeting passed the APEC declaration against corruption and decided to tackle corruption and refuse to provide safe haven for corruption and illicit assets. Sixth, we carried out the dialogue on connectivity in Asia Pacific. Before the economic leaders meeting, China held a dialogue on connectivity in Asia Pacific, invited seven neighbors of China and two international and regional organizations. All parties applaud the initiatives provided by China, including the Silk Road Economic Belt and 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, the AIIB and Silk Road Fund, and their role in breaking the bottlenecks of connectivity and infrastructure. We decided to deepen practical cooperation so as to achieve common prosperity and development of Asia Pacific. Dear colleague, as is mentioned by Chinese President Xi Jinping at the conclusion, the APEC summit is not an end but a new beginning point. China is ready to work with all sides to turn the APEC outcomes and consensus to reality and to make our remitting efforts to realize the Asia-Pacific dream of common development and prosperity and progress. Thank you.